So in the first video, we set up a client. In the second, we set up a job. The third, we used the dispatch board. The fourth, we went over invoicing and getting paid. And now in the fifth video, we're going to go over managing your jobs from the calendar. So if you're a company that uses appointment times, you're definitely going to want to be familiar with the calendar. Now, not all companies are going to do that. Some companies don't use the calendar because they aren't appointment based and the dispatch board works just fine. But a lot of companies do use appointment times. And for that, the calendar is a good tool. So what we're going to do is go up to scheduling and calendar. And this is just going to bring us right to the calendar. And notice here, what's showing is the resource view. Now the calendar has several different views or ways that you can look at it. So let's just go through those. The first is the day view. And this is just going to show one day at a time. So currently we're on the 14th. I could go over here to look at the next day. And if I scroll down, it's going to show me all of my appointment times and all the jobs for that day. I could look in the week view, which is very similar to the day view. You have each of your days in a separate column. And also the month view you could use. This is going to be maybe not as helpful if you're trying to schedule a job because there's a spacing um, limitation here with how big each day is on this view. So you'll notice this, we're looking at the statistics for the job. We can see how many jobs are there for the day, but it's not necessarily as easy to see what the appointment times are here, but we can get that information on the month view. We can look at the timeline view. The timeline view is going to have all of your resources listed as rows, separate rows. And then on the top, your columns are going to be the appointment times. And then you can go to your resource view, which is an inversion of the timeline view. Essentially, your resources are up top. Each column is in resource and the rows are your appointment times. So let's say in this resource view, a client calls us up and we want to go ahead and schedule a job. And we know, well, a team doesn't have any jobs for today. So let's go ahead and schedule a job for a team. So the way I would do that is I would just click on this space right on the calendar. And this creates a slot here and I can just drag this down. And now what I can do is click this little check mark, which is to schedule an item. And what we're going to do is choose which item we want to schedule. If that's a job to do or calendar event, in this case, we want to schedule a job. So I will select that and it's just going to be a one-time job. And notice it brings us to this overlay that we've seen before when we schedule the job. But now what I can do is go ahead and put the details in. If I wanted to select an existing client, I could do that. But in this case, let's say we want to make a job for a new client. So a new client calls us and we first need to actually create that client. And so there's a nice quick add button here that allows us to create a client. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll create a new client. All right, now here, if we wanted to, we could also add another number at the very end. So I'm not going to do that, but know that we could do that. And then once we're done with all the information, we click create. And now this has created an, a new client in the system. So we've got our new client. Now let's go ahead and schedule this job. We just need to pick our service, which will just be our maintenance service, this residential maintenance. Notice that it already defaulted to the A team because we scheduled the job on the calendar under the A team column. And let's adjust the quantity, rate, budgeted hours if we need to. And then the start and end times are actually going to pre-fill because again, we're doing it on the calendar and we've selected our appointment slot. So all the information looks good. We click save. And now I have a new job here on the calendar. Now, if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to print the route sheet for this, or I wanted to see it on the mobile, to do that, I would dispatch it, and I could dispatch it from here by clicking on the details and changing the status here to dispatched, and then saving it. So again, that was just clicking on this job and then go to the details. 
but typically you wouldn't be dispatching just one at a time. You'd probably be doing multiple. And for that, I would suggest going back to the dispatch board and doing it from there. So we would go to just scheduling, dispatch board, and here's our job. So normally we might have several different jobs for this day. It's much easier to dispatch all at once just by checking all and dispatching. But notice on the calendar, it has a lot of the same features as the dispatch board. You can go and print the route sheets. You can also print a calendar report. And you can see all of your jobs and dispatch them. And so that's really the basics of using the calendar. I would suggest that you go up after you're done with this video, go to our help section and view our on-demand classes, specifically intro one and intro two, which will go over basic functionality in the system. Also, if you want to, you can go to the knowledge base and that has really good videos and help tutorials and articles. And you can also check out the user guide as well. Now, one last thing I'll mention about the calendar here is if you are a company that uses the calendar and you use the dispatch board, you may want to look at using the dispatch calendar, which is going to be a hybrid between the two systems. So you can go ahead and check out that. You would go to help and on-demand classes and check out the dispatch calendar video. It's an advanced feature, so you'll need to watch the video to get that enabled for your system. And that's it. I hope these videos have been helpful to you. And thanks again for choosing Service Autopilot.